we're going to begin a study on the Ten Commandments. So you may be asking yourself, why would we need to study the Ten Commandments? And I think in today's world, with so many people having so many different opinions as to what is right and what is wrong, I feel it's necessary that we go back and we look and see what God actually talked about in Exodus chapter 20. But before we get to that, I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 and it says this, He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And I want us to think about that even as we look at the Ten Commandments, nothing that we can do on in our deeds, actions, anything that we can do can make us righteous and be being able to present ourselves to God. It is only through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and God's grace and mercy that we become the righteousness of God. In Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 through 6 we read this, Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself whether in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow in worship to them, and do not serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the father's iniquity to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. I think it's important for us to look at this scripture and I think we need to examine this scripture of, of what God actually says. God says that he is... God and we should have no other gods besides Him. I think we all get kind of hung up on that sometimes when we read that God is a jealous God, the God of the Bible is a jealous God and we feel that He doesn't have the right to be a jealous God, but that's simply not true. God is God. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the creator of the universe and He is the creator of all mankind and He has the right to set the rules and say what He wants to say. And He says, I'm a jealous God and you should have no other gods before me. It's that simple. We don't have the right to question God in that decision. That is his decision to make. He give us something called free will and our free will gives us the choice that we have the right to choose the God of the Bible or not. I also want to point out that uh, he cre he's talking about a narrative in here of creating something called an idol, something that we worship inside of God or besides God. And I want us to take a moment to look at that because I believe that there are people that um, have to have something tangible that they can touch, feel, go to, bow down before, pray to, whatever you want to call it, that they have to have something. And so therefore they've created their self something called an idol. And God says, no, you don't bow down to anybody but me. It is important to know that God created each and every one of us to be a spiritual being because he is a spiritual God. And there are many times that you cannot touch or feel uh, God it, with your fingertips. It is, it, is a, it is a presence that you sense. Um, it is a relationship with you have. And it's not always um, a beautiful relationship. I mean, it's a beautiful relationship to be in a relationship with God. But there's hard things sometimes we have to deal with. And God works with us to deal with hard things. And it's not always just pleasant and fun all the time. There are hardships and there are things that we have to go through. But that does not mean that God does not love us and that does not mean that he should be should not be the focus of our worship and our relationship I think sometimes we create uh, idols by creating an institution, a government, or belief system, or whatever, that we create something that fulfills a need that we have, a fleshly need that we have, not a spiritual need we have, a fleshly need that we have, and therefore we begin to worship that and idolize that particular aspect of our life instead of turning to God and getting the information and the, the, the spiritual side of of it that God wants to bring us. 
I think it's very important for us to note now that in our society, uh, even though some people believe in the God of the Bible, they believe that there are many paths to get to this God. And that right there is false. There is no truth in that. For in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, excuse me, it's first, first Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, and that, or that is the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way. It is only through the blood on the cross, only through Jesus Christ do we get to God the Father, God the Creator, God of the Bible. That is the only way we get to that. It is not through our works. It is not through the things that we do. It is not uh, in a system where we our good outweighs our bad or anything like that. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. I also want to point out right here in my wa walk that I've had with God and in my talks that I've had with other people, uh, I have uh, of late been hearing a lot of this, well, I'm a very spiritual person and I believe in God, but I'm, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. I don't necessarily believe in the God of the Bible, but I'm a very spiritual person. Well, that's just hogwash. That has no basis at all. You either believe it or you don't. The lack of not believing it puts you in that category. If you do not believe the Bible as being the true word of God, you do not believe in the God of the Bible, then all the rest is false and you go into that category. God is a spiritual God, but there is only one way to God, and that way is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Before we end our time today, I want us to look at one more passage of Scripture, and it is John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. John chapter 1, verse 12 through 13, and it says this, But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural descent or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. So I want us to break that verse down for just a minute and I want us to look at it. It is not by the will of the flesh. That means anything that we can do, anything that we can bring, any of our deeds, actions, how good we are, has nothing to do with that. Not of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, and I believe that is generational, not because our fathers and our mothers were Christian that that can be passed down, not because they were good or they want it. It, it, it cannot be of the will of man. It has to be from the will of God. So God has decreed that we have the right, if we believe and accept Jesus Christ, we have the right to be become children of God. So that is believing that Jesus Christ died upon a cross for our sin, that he took our death that we have in the law and he nailed it to a cross so that all of our sins are covered. That is part of the believing and then receiving his mercy and his grace. So it's not anything that we do. It is only through our accepting what he did on the cross and then us believing and us receiving his grace and his mercy. So at the very end, I want us to pray um, just a sinner's prayer. Um, if you if this is the first time you've ever given your heart to God, I, I thank you and I, and just you know get you a Bible and study the Bible. If not, I think we can all uh, at times uh, reiterate what we did at our very beginning. So let us pray. Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you and I acknowledge in my heart and in my mind and in my soul that I am not worthy of your mercy, but I confess to you that you died in my place. You took my sin to the cross and died for me. In my heart, in my mind, in my soul, I ask you to forgive me of my transgressions. I ask you to take control of my life. Give me a new heart, one that is responsive to your word. 
I receive now your grace and your mercy and I am a changed person in Jesus Christ. I am no longer dead in sin, but I am alive in Christ. Amen.